Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So the series is called The Family Ties. We're looking at uh, what is it that binds a family together? What super glues a family together with all of the trials and challenges and emotions that uh, stress uh, that, that come into our lives and affect our relationships? First, we found out the most important thing is grace. The grace that God has given to us so freely. We do not deserve His grace. We do not deserve to be forgiven. We cannot earn it. And as we have been freely forgiven, we are to freely forgive. That's, that's so important in all of our relationships, especially in our families. And remember, uh, what we're talking about, of course, we're focusing on the family and the home, but this deals with all of our relationships, it deals with our church family. It's, uh, it applies to every, everyone. Uh, last week, we talked about discipline, a little harder topic to, to talk about. Uh, but the main point, again, was that the whole goal, the whole purpose of, of loving discipline is for improvement. We want to help them grow, help them make better choices, have, if it's at work, an employee, better performance. The whole point is to make the other person better. Today, we're going to talk about legacy, and how legacy ties families together. Now, more than just genes or traits, personalities, Maybe in your children you might notice one child is like one parent, the other child more like the other parent. More than that, and certainly more than an inheritance or a bequest, when I talk about legacy, I, I want to define legacy today as leaving something that you love to someone that you love. The operative word there is, of course, love. There's a lot of things that are important to us. There's a lot of things that we love. But in our Christian life, the most important thing, the thing that we love the most is Jesus. Because it's Jesus alone who can give life and love and peace and joy. So that brings us to our text. Uh, 2 Timothy 1. Now, 2 Timothy is not a story. 2 Timothy is a list of instructions, actually. It's a list of advice. Uh, Paul, an, an old-timer pastor, is, is sharing some wisdom with a, a young buck pastor. So, if you can you can think of an old-timer pastor, like Pastor Brooks. <laughs> and, 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 and some young buck pastor like me. I, you know, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, it's like gray here. Hide that. Uh, so, so Paul writes, he starts off his letter. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Now the context, Paul is writing this from prison. He, Paul's in a tough spot. And, and Paul is not in prison because he uh, robbed a convenience store. <laughs> not in prison because he killed anyone. He's in prison because he was preaching the gospel like I am right now. And the authorities didn't like that. So they put him in prison. So he's not able, at this stage in his life, he's not able to go out and plant the churches that he planted all over the Mideast. He's not able to have the vibrant ministry and preaching in big you know, churches, big assemblies of people. He's locked in a cell. He's older, slower. but he understands the importance and the urgency of a legacy. Passing on something that you love 
to someone that you love. Wherever you are in your walk with the Lord, whatever stage of life, I say this all the time, as long as you're breathing, God still has work for you to do. As long as you're breathing, God still has work for you to do. It might be praying for someone. It might be just writing them a note to share what you love with someone you love. The importance and urgency of legacy. Paul understood that, and so he, he sat down uh, to write this letter. And I want you to notice how he addresses Timothy, the young buck. He doesn't call him a young buck. He, he calls him agapitos, a dear son, a literally beloved beloved son. And that's the very heart, again, of legacy. Uh, something that we love to someone that we love. We want to pass down a legacy. We want to pass down love. In verse 3, he says, I thank God whom I serve as did my ancestors. Look at that. Paul realizes that the legacy that he is passing down was handed down to him. And I think that's so important for us to remember. Even within our, our families, of course, is the gospel. Whoever told us, and we share that gospel with, with the next generation. Think of, I always think of it as our church family. How the gospel and the mission has been passed down to us. You think about it, desert foothills. How, how important, how influential was Pastor Byer? His passion for connecting people together and building relationships. His passion for, for evangelism, for sharing the gospel and doing mission work. That's a legacy that I've been given as a pastor and that you've been given as the family of faith here at Desert Foothills. You know, we're not starting from zero. We're building on a foundation that's already been been laid for us. So t uh, Paul, first thing he realizes is that, he says, you know, my ancestors, we passed down this faith, this love of God, the gospel, that now I'm going to pass on to you with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day, passing on a legacy. Number one, love. Number one, prayer. So important to pray pray for our neighbors, but let's talk about in our families, right? To pray for our, our children. Yeah, I've got a number of brothers uh, in the ministry who uh, stay connected, uh, know when things, uh, challenges, loss happens, and, and they, they will always reach out to me and say, hey, hey brother, I'm, I'm praying for you. And that means so much to me. But does that, does that touch you when somebody just tells you, hey, I know what you had a rough, you've been sick, what, I've been praying for you. You know, that, that tells you, first of all, that you're not alone. You're not carrying this burden. You're not going through this struggle alone. Someone else knows and cares and, and wants to help and wants to, wants to give your, your concerns and lift them up to God. And the second thing it reminds you of is that your life is not in your own hands. Your life is in God's hands. Right? Despite what you may think, despite what you think you might be able to control, despite what your stress may make you think of how much you can control, the reality is our lives are in God's hands. And when we pray, when we tell other people we pray for other people, we're reminding them that their lives are ultimately in God's hands. We're, we're giving it to God. Now, don't you want your children to know that? Don't you, when you pray for your children, you tell them that you pray for them? Don't you want them to know that they're, they're, they don't go through their struggles alone? They're not, they don't have to carry the burden by themselves? And don't you want the, your children to know that ultimately their lives are in God's hands? That's who we turn to. We turn to the Lord. And I would say pray not only for your children, pray with 
your children. So powerful, so important. When they see your faith, the legacy of love and prayer that you've been given to pass on to the next generation. Pray with your children as well. Verse 5, <clears throat> Paul's still writing. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure lives in you as well. Again, the legacy that has been passed down to Timothy, just like Paul credits the, his ancestors, his family, passed down the faith to him that he's passing to. He realizes Timothy's faith did not begin with him, and it's not going to end with him. We give thanks for those who've gone before us, for those who've loved us, those who have shared God's love with us. That's exactly what Paul was doing. So I just want to get real practical. I just want to talk about how to leave a legacy of faith, how to leave a legacy of faith. And number one is to make faith a priority. If, if you want to leave a legacy of faith to your children, you got to make faith a priority in your life. And it's, there's so many things competing for our time. There's so many things that want to climb up our priority list and take the top spot. It's it's a constant battle. I know that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm well aware of how hard it is. We want to keep faith the top, top priority. Now, just to give a little honest self-assessment on how we're doing, keeping faith our top priority, just a few questions to ask ourselves is, uh, one, how often do I pray with or pray for my children? just talked about how important that is. So if faith is a top priority for you, how often are we praying? How often are we praying? Second question we can ask, you know, where do other things, like sports, or grades, or trips, where do they fall on the priority list in my home? Sports, grades, trips, these are all good things. They're all good things. Grades are super important. Very important in my house, at least. We're, my, our kids know. It's very important. But if we let any of those things take priority over faith, church, worship, what are we passing down? What are we saying is really important? Love and prayer. Uh, Number three, this is, the, this is the next question. How is my church attendance? How is my church attendance? It, it, it's, it's kind of funny how the mind works. You know, in, in our minds, we tend to give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. Don't we? You know, I'm, uh, I'm example, I'm, I'm trying to be more healthy. I'm trying to, trying to do a little exercise every day, trying to eat more healthy. And the you know, little Fitbit tells me my exercise. But I can also, on the app, I can log all of the food that I eat. Of course, the goal, right, you want to eat fewer calories than, than you burn each day. And so I got this app, and I, I log every, every single thing that I eat most days. And some days, I wing it. And on those days, I say, breakfast? Oh, I did great. I did great at breakfast. Yeah, I remember. I did, right. Lunch? Lunch was good. I, well, I did a good job at lunch. Dinner? Yes. Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. Dinner was fine. Well, no, it was fine. I did fine at dinner. And so then, later on, I might say, I want to get a snack. And I'll say, oh, I've done pretty good today. I can have a snack. But I bet you if I was logging everything that I ate, I wouldn't have that snack. We tend to give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. Oh, church, I go to church all the time. Yeah, I was just there. I'm always at church. Uh, remember the database I told you about where I see Pastor Boyson? I can also see everybody's church attendance. 
I, I, I am certain most of us, most of us would, be, would overestimate how often we each attend church. Uh, that's so important, right? Gathering together as the family of God where we pray for one another, we share God's love. It's an important part uh, of building our faith, of, of building that, laying that foundation, and certainly passing on the legacy. The legacy has been handed down to us. Uh, well, Hebrews 10 says, right, let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now uh, that the day of his return is drawing near. All the more important today uh, that we gather together as a family to worship God, receive his blessings, and to encourage one another. You know, we're not walking alone. Okay, leaving a legacy of faith. So we want to make faith a priority. We also want to, to get help. To get help. Uh, life is hard. Raising children is very challenging. Um, and we have so many uh, households today, single parents, single moms, or even... Uh, you, maybe you're married, but your spouse travels all the time for work, and you feel like a single mom Monday through Friday. I know, I know my wife feels like a single mom on Sunday mornings. It's, it's all her uh, getting them up, getting them dressed, getting them to church, and dragging them around. So it, it, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. But here we are. Here we are as a, a family of faith, and I would encourage all of us, we all have a responsibility to help each other, especially those young families at very critical stage in life and a very difficult stage in life. Look for ways to encourage, help, bless, walk alongside, help carry some of the burden of our young families. How about this? How about you just say thank you? How about you just give an encouraging word, word of affirmation to our children, to our youth, who help lead part of our worship service, doing slides and soundboard, acolyting. You see them working all over the campus. What can we do? What can we do to encourage our young families, especially our children and our youth? How about this? How about today? Just for today. You're not allowed to go home today. You cannot go get in your car and leave today until you give one child or one of our youth a high five, a thank you for being, it's so great to see you in church. We're so glad you're a part of our church family. Something affirming, something encouraging today. Can you do that? Okay, good. I'll go stand in the parking lot and make sure nobody leaves until you. These are things we can do. We want to encourage. We want to bless. We want to pass down the legacy that we've been given to those baptized children in our midst. And that's part of the vows, actually, we took when the children are baptized. We're going to help encourage them in the faith. Good. Oh, number three, never, ever give up hope. Never, ever give up hope. Sometimes our children wander off. Sometimes... It seems our children have given up on their faith in Jesus. Never give up hope. Reminds me of uh, Jesus' story of the prodigal son. You're familiar with the prodigal son? Father had two sons, loved them both. One son said, Dad, I don't want to do things your way anymore. I don't like your rules. I want to live my own life. Do my, give me my share of the inheritance and I'm out of here. His father did, he left, went and squandered it in wild living until he had nothing left. And he came crawling back on his hands and knees, ready to beg his father for mercy, ready to just beg his father to just let him be a servant in, in, his, uh, in his house. And his dad came running, running to his son. So he'd been looking every day, hoping, is this going to be the day that my son returns? Is this going to be the day? And he sees the sun on the rise. He runs after him, scoops him up off the ground, puts the best robe on him, puts a ring on his finger, has a feast 
My son who is dead is, is alive. He was lost and now he's found. You know who the father is in that parable, right? It's God. It's God. He's loving and merciful and gracious and patient. <laughs> Way more patient than this father. Right? And he waits and he longs for his children to return to him. Never, ever give up hope. Again, uh, for the single parents also, such a struggle. Single moms especially. I don't, know, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you keep everything together. All the schedules, all the activities, all the things that need to be done. Every night, just get ready. For, I, I don't know how you do it. Work. I want you to be encouraged. That you, your ministry to your children, you plus God are an awesome team. You've got incredible power. And I would say this, you plus God plus your church family are an amazing team. Amazing team. Look at this. Uh, in Acts 16, we, we meet Timothy. Paul came also to Derby and to Lystra, and a disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. And we talk a lot about the importance of a father in the spiritual role uh, of children when they grow up, and, and that's because Mostly children learn uh, what they know about stuff inside the home from their mom, and they learn stuff about what's outside the home, out in the world from their dad. And so that's why that's so true. But this can be very discouraging to single moms. And I just want you to see that Timothy's mom was a, a faithful believer, but his dad was not. And yet, the ministry and the love that his mom, Timothy's mom, gave to him, partnered with God, it was a powerful influence. And Timothy became one of the great early leaders of the church, the very foundation of the faith that we still have today was passed down to us. So be very encouraged. God is with you. Family ties, grace, discipline, and a legacy. Think about the big picture when you're raising your children, when, you're, when, you're, when you see children in our church, think of the big picture, right? Who's going to be in here worshiping 20 years from now, 40 years from now, right? Got to make it a priority. We've, we have been given a legacy of love, of prayer, the gospel, and we want to pass down that legacy to the next generation. It's our time. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.